cat with kettlebell dojo and in this video I will answer the question about double kettlebell rack and the difference between Gary Boy and hard style. The question comes from Chai Bronze and they ask, can you do a video on double kettlebell rack? Would like to see differences between sport and hard style and also some tips on keeping a straight posture in hard style rack while fighting the gravity of the bells falling away from the body especially if using larger competition bells. In the gear boy rack, you rest your elbows on the iliac crest. The kettlebells might be stacked on top of each other. Your thoracic spine is flexed. But the main point of the gear boy rack is to rest the elbows on the iliac crest. The main purpose of the Giriboy rack is to rest while you are performing the 10 minute Giriboy. Another benefit of the Giriboy rack is that you can launch the kettlebells straight from your iliac crest. So your legs drive right into your elbows and the elbows is a bone so it drives straight into your kettlebells. which is energy saving. So you're resting on your bones and you're pushing from your bones and bypassing your upper body. What is required in order to have a good and safe Gary Boy rack? Two things. First, thoracic mobility. Now, when you're performing a Gary Boy sport jerk or long cycle, you first rest the kettlebells, uh, rest your elbows on your uh, iliac crest and that way you will need to flex your thoracic spine and then you will need to jerk the kettlebells and here you will need to extend your thoracic spine. So gear boy sport requires thoracic spine mobility first and foremost. Second, you need a flexibility in your hip flexors. In order to rest comfortably in the gear boy rack, your hips need to be fully open. Otherwise what happens is your pelvis starts tucking forward. So there is a forward rotation of the pelvis, which puts too much pressure on your lower back. For most modern people, especially those who lead a seated working lifestyle, Giriboy rack is either not accessible or only accessible with a lot of mobility work. Athletes who compete in Giriboy sport perform a lot of mobility work on their hips, and on their thoracic spine. They mobilize every single day. And if the person is not mobile, then what happens is that instead of flexing through the thoracic spine and extending through the hips, the lower back takes all the brunt. Another challenge of the Gerbo rack is that it doesn't suit most fitness movements, such as squats, lunges, and presses. So, Squats and lunges must be performed with a straight spine. Gerigo rack doesn't have a straight spine. So try performing a lunge when your elbow is resting on your iliac crest. It is impossible. In order to do that, you have to straighten up. Hard style rack. The purpose of the hard style rack is the same purpose as the hard style itself, general physical preparedness or fitness or strength and conditioning. The main objective of general physical preparedness is to prepare you for life and multiple sports. So that is to increase your general strength, mobility, endurance, power, speed, balance, coordination, and so on. Because of that, hard style rack has to make itself available to the majority of fitness exercises such as squats, lunges, presses, and so on. Hard style rack is also more challenging to maintain because you are not resting on your bones as you would in the gear boy rack. The goal of hard style rack is not to rest. It is to be an active rack for the weight while training your body at the same time. So correctly holding the hard style rack improves your midsection pressurization, 
it improves your spinal stability, it improves your shoulder stability and your posture. The hard style rack, whether with a single or double kettlebells, is also more easily accessible to the majority of everyday people who don't have the required thoracic or hip mobility for the Geriboy rack. How to make sure that you have a strong hard style rack? First, always connect your upper arm to the torso. And second, keep your forearms either slightly leaning in or vertical if you're a lady with large breasts. Avoid doing this and avoid doing this. There can be two main issues with the hard style rack. First one is chicken wings. And this happens to people who have internally rotated shoulders. So in the hard style rack, to make it more stable and easy on the shoulder, you want to have your upper arm resting on your torso and your forearms to be nearly vertical. For some people who have internally rotated shoulder, they will be holding the kettlebell here, which sort of defeats the purpose. So now your upper arm is not resting on your body and that means that your shoulder is taking all of the loading. And this generally leads to tension in the upper traps, which further exacerbates the internal rotation of the shoulder. There are many drills out there that help you improve the external rotation of the shoulder, so I'm bringing the elbow in. One of them is called dowel external rotation. Simply take a dowel, place it on the outside of your elbow and inside of your wrist and lift with the opposite arm. There are many more drills that you can find online. There are thousands for shoulder external rotation mobility. And so I'm not gonna be going into depth here, but suffice it to say that if you work on improving your hard style rack here, you will also be improving your shoulder health and stability because you'll be improving the shoulder external rotation. Another issue that you might run into with hard style rack is that since it is not a resting position like the Guribor rack, it is an active position, you might find that your arms are tiring faster than your legs. This will happen more often to women because women's upper bodies are generally weaker than their lower bodies. And so what do you do if you have your kettlebells and you want to perform a decent leg workout or decent leg exercise, but your arms cannot handle the load. What I do is two things. First, I progress the exercise. So if I have graduated from two heaviest kettlebells that I can hold for squats, for example, so if I'm doing very heavy kettlebells, as heavy as I can hold for the squat, which is already something that has happened, I simply move on. I don't do squats, front squats with the kettlebell anymore. Instead, I either take my anchor overhead, which is more challenging. So I now perform overhead squats, or I move on to pistols, i.e. I start training the single leg squat. And final or third option that I use if I am performing a complex, for example, that contains squats, push presses, snatches, swings, and my arms are getting tired, I simply place the kettlebells on my shoulders, I call this the shoulder rack, perform the leg exercises, then rack them again and move on with the arm exercises. Finally, if you're performing a complex that contains strict presses and then some leg exercises such as squats, of course, you will find that the weight that you need for the press is enough for the shoulders, but way too light for the legs. So what can you do in this situation? You either double the reps for the squats, so you perform five reps for the shoulders and then 10 reps for the squats, 
and if your arms can't handle it then perform double the reps for the squats but shoulder rack the kettlebells and the final question how can a person training with competition style kettlebells hold them in a hard style rack without them wrenching out the arms so one way to do it is to bring the hands closer together placing one kettlebell handle on top of the other and interlink the fingers this is what Gary Boy athletes do to prevent the kettlebells from falling apart so you can do that too of course the rest can remain hard style so you keep yourself upright keep your upper arm connected to the torso the heavier the kettlebells you are holding the more you will have to make space for them by gently rounding, rounding your thoracic spine and attaching the entirety of your upper arm to the torso so if you're holding two heavy kettlebells and that doesn't matter if they're uh, cast iron or steel competition kettlebells you will make sure that you are attaching your entire upper arm to the torso this means that you might be slightly flexing your thoracic spine so you're not quiet resting your elbows on the iliac crest like so and you're not standing completely up upright like this this requires some thoracic mobility otherwise if you don't have enough thoracic mobility to create this space you will be arching through your lower back and you will feel this in your lower back if you're feeling the rack in your lower back then it is best to assume a vertical position pressurize your spine and be upright it is best to sacrifice a little bit of arm fatigue to keep your lower back safe you can tell that i'm holding two heavy kettlebells because i'm pressurizing my midsection so hard that my voice is sounding a little bit strangled if i was holding them in the gary boy rack my voice doesn't have to be strangled because i'm not really using my midsection this method of interlinking the kettlebell kettlebells will work to a point if you are a tall person who is using competition style kettlebells for hard style training then that is no problem in one of my videos about which kettlebells are best suited for you i talked about who who can train with competition style kettlebells uh, without any problems if you are a shorter person like myself uh, with shorter arms then you will find that working with competition style kettlebells is just harder it's not better it's just harder so they make lifting even a lighter weight much harder without actually making you better for it because they're just much more unwieldy uh, for a shorter person so for example to swing them between your legs you have to step really wide to hold them here because the arm is so short you you're much more likely to have them wrench out your arms and because your torso is small you also can't move your arms in close enough for them to not be wrenching out your arms so in general i find that smaller people do not suit competition style kettlebells the only reason gary boy athletes of all sizes use competition style kettlebells is because they are the standard not because they're suitable for their bodies remember that sport is not about something being suitable for your body for your general physical preparedness sport is about sport it is not fitness when you're training for fitness you need to use tools that are suitable for your body when you're training for sport you obey the rules of the sport and if you notice Gary Boy sport athletes are generally quite tall in summary the difference between Gary Boy style rack and hard style rack is that Gary Boy rack is designed for Gary Boy sport it allows you to rest between reps without putting the kettlebell down which is not allowed in gear boy sport it also allows you to launch the kettlebells straight from your hips overhead bypassing the upper body 
It requires intensive mobilization of the thoracic spine and the hip flexors, otherwise the rack will put too much pressure on the lower back. Hard style rack is designed for general physical preparedness, fitness, strength and conditioning. It lends itself to more exercises, it uses the upper body in order to maintain itself, so it requires work to maintain itself uh, and therefore it is more suitable for general strength and conditioning and shorter workouts. It doesn't require intensive mobilization, so it is accessible to more everyday people. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions.